Hello friends, this is a short and sweet update on the Ukrainian counteroffensive and how it is going. Ukrainians were counterattacking, or as they usually pronounce it, proving over the last four days, concentrating their efforts in two areas of Zaporozhye Oblast, Arekhov and Vremevka Bolsh. Today and yesterday, we saw especially ferocious Ukrainian assaults that involved hundreds of armored vehicles and thousands of soldiers. We know that this is a quote-unquote real offensive because it involves several elite units of the Ukrainian army, including the 47th and 65th brigades, which were built from the ground precisely for this offensive. The 47th Brigade specifically being an elite all-volunteer unit trained in NATO countries that can drive NATO tanks. They attacked Russian positions in Zaporozhye that held the line against immense artillery barrages and heavy deep strikes, HIMARS, Storm Shadow, you name it. That's when Russian artillery and aviation came into play. The latter has scored many of the armor kills we have seen today, with Ka-52 helicopters achieving the very first confirmed kills of Leopard 2s and Bradleys. At least around half a dozen of Leos and a dozen of Bradleys were destroyed, as well as dozens of MRAPs and Soviet-built units of AFU armor. Visually confirmed vehicle losses of the Ukrainian army have surpassed the number of 100 in a couple of days, all in the same attempted offensive. Despite these Herculean efforts, most of the Ukrainian troops did not even reach the line of contact. Several convoys were destroyed miles deep into Ukrainian-held territory, before they even saw the battlefield. Russian forces briefly left village of Lapkove, a height and an entrenched forward position, but after breaking the back of the assault, the soldiers of Russian regiments counterattacked and managed to retake all of the lost positions. The actual defensive line was never physically reached by Ukrainian troops. While the battle is not over yet, the offensive has just begun and the war will continue for a long time still. The last couple of days undeniably show the reality of just how badly Ukraine and the West have been lying to themselves and to the rest of the world about both Russian and Ukrainian combat abilities. Once again, the Russian soldier has held the line. Once again, German tanks are burning in the steppes of Ukraine. Meanwhile, Ukrainians and trans-Ukrainians around the world are happy. Unapologetic Ukrainian laughter and jubilations are heard on about every Polish strawberry plantation. What's there to be happy about when your precious counteroffensive is proven to be a total disaster? Well, you see, a shark killed a Russian young tourist in Hurgada yesterday. Fatal shark attacks like this are a sad reality in the aptly named Red Sea. Every year, dozens of tourists get eaten alive by sharks, and for some reason, it is almost always Egypt. A poor 23-year-old guy who went to Egypt with his dad was shouting Papa as the shark was ripping off his arms and legs. It was filmed by some tourist on shore. What a tragic, unnecessary loss of life. For normal people, regardless of their nationality or political persuasion, not for Ukrainians though. They were hooting and hollering, orgasming while re-watching this clip of a shark attack for 24 hours now. It's literally all they talk about. They're drawing shark memes and their American handlers are no strangers in mocking this poor guy's death either. Haha, <laughs> he died. Their shark killed Russian orc civilian. This is the best meme ever. It is an absolutely pathetic behavior and war is not an excuse for this. Believe me, Ukrainian political nation was acting in this very manner for at least a decade now. They have always been salivating over random deaths of Russians that they have seen on the news. Siberian children were caught in a fire in a shopping mall. Ukrainians 
sabered this incident for days and weeks. Ukrainian pranksters would call all shopping malls in Russia with bomb threats. They have renamed food items sold in their bars into burnt Russian children. What kills me is that it's not a loud minority of people. It's a very strange case of almost an entire nation adopting an image board edgy incel culture and not seeing what's wrong with it. The upside of this deviancy is that they will lose, not only on the battlefield, but also in the heavenly court. They don't care about themselves at all. They ignore all their internal problems, a crippling number of killed in action, tanking economy, lack of freedom of speech, forced mobilization, and no serious military victories to show for it. They are very easily satisfied by tragedies happening to Russians and are completely obedient to middling American managers that pat them on their silly little heads. It's all very pathetic and they will get what they deserve.